In this video, we're going to go over the simple hydrocarbons, which are alkanes and alkenes. We'll start by looking at alkanes and what they are, then we'll do the same with alkenes, and lastly we'll talk about the types of bonding between alkanes and alkenes, how they're similar and how they differ. So we'll start by talking about the simple hydrocarbon basics. The word hydrocarbon, as you can see, is made up of two parts. Hydro, which means hydrogen, and carbon, which obviously just means carbon. From our first video in the series, we said that hydrogen has one valence electron and one valence site, whereas carbon has four valence electrons and four bonding sites. So what does this mean in terms of our hydrocarbons? Let's think of it as an easier example, like hand holding. Each hydrogen atom has one hand to hold, whereas each carbon atom has four hands to hold. So when all of these hands are held, you can see there's four hydrogens for each carbon. Now if we talk about it in terms of electrons, Again, we know that carbon has four valence electrons, which you can see here in red, which are our four bonding sites, and hydrogen has one valence electron, which you can see in yellow, so therefore there's only one bonding site. You can see the electrons will all come together as the yellow moves closer to the red, so these are all bonded. And they're bonded covalently because they're sharing valence electrons. As we know in our basics video, we said that there must be eight electrons in carbon's outer shell, which is the second shell, for it to be stable. And if you count, we've got eight here, so that's stable. This is important to know because exam questions will often ask you what this means and how to interpret it. Now we'll start looking at alkanes. So alkanes are structures which only have carbons and hydrogens. So if this is our carbon here, we know it's got four bonding sites, and each of these are going to be hydrogens. We already know that this is covalent bonding, which is also called electrostatic attraction. Now we'll look at naming alkanes. So for level 1, you need to know the first 8 names of the carbons. So this is alkanes with 1 carbon up to 8 carbons in the chain. It's actually pretty easy because you can see all of the names end with ane, A-N-E, just like the word alkane. So that's easy to remember. All you need to know now is the prefix. And these are the same for all hydrocarbons. So you can see if there's one carbon, it's methane, two carbons, ethane, three carbons, propane, four carbons, butane, five carbons, pentane, six carbons, hexane, seven carbons, heptane, and eight carbons, octane. You might recognize some of these prefixes from geometry, like a hexagon is a six-sided shape, and hexane has six carbons. So you can always remember it like that. An important formula you should remember is CnH2n plus 2. So this just means for alkanes, for every carbon you have, you're going to have twice as many hydrogens plus two extra hydrogens. The condensed structural formula here on the right hand side of the table is instead of the stick drawing. So this is our stick drawing here, which is just our structural formula, and you can see it shows visually where the carbon and hydrogens are in relation to each other. Whereas in the condensed structural formula, it's still got all the same information, but instead of being visual, they've just taken out the lines and written down what you have. Now we're going to talk about alkenes. So if this is our carbon, we know it's got four valence electrons, and hydrogens have one. Now if we add in a second carbon, and we put all these bonds together, and then we add a second double bond between the carbon and carbon, you can see we've now got 10 electrons around each carbon. So that's not going to balance because we have a maximum of 8 electrons that can be in our second shell. So somehow we need to lose some electrons to meet our maximum of 8 electrons per second shell. So for this we need to drop 2 electrons and we'll do this by removing one of the hydrogens on one side. So now there's 8 electrons around the left hand side carbon and we'll do the same on the right hand side because that's still not 8 electrons. So we'll drop that hydrogen there, and now we've got 8 electrons around both carbons, so both of these are balanced and stable. This is also important to note because examiners love to ask how you make an alkene from an alkane, and why you drop the two hydrogens in order to counteract the electrons gained when you have a double bond between the two carbons. So this is our structural formula here. You can see alkenes have a double bonded carbon to carbon, they only have carbons and hydrogens, which is similar to an alkane, which we know has covalent bonding, which is also called electrostatic attraction. Now we'll look at the differences between the types of bonding. So an alkane is what we call a saturated bond, whereas an alkene is unsaturated. This is because if we break that carbon to carbon double bond, 
we now have two free spots where we can add other chains of hydrocarbons. So this is represented by R. You could add a methyl or an alcohol there. So if we think back to this slide here, we were going from an alkane to an alkene. We needed to drop two electrons, so we removed an H from each carbon. Now if we go back the other way, from an alkene to an alkane, so we're going from an unsaturated bond to a saturated bond, we need to add two electrons. So we'll do this by replacing the hydrogens that we took off from each carbon. This is also important to know because examiners will ask you how to do this and what the process is, especially when we come to polymerization, which we cover in another video. So if we look at that visually, we can see we're going to take away one of the carbons and the double bond. We're going to add in a hydrogen, which we'll put in there, and we'll add another hydrogen. So now we've got eight electrons, so this is going to be stable. Now we'll look at naming alkenes. Again, for level one, you only need to know the first eight alkenes. And just like alkanes, all of the names end with E and E, en, which is the same as alkene. So all you need to remember is the prefix. You can see here we start with ethene, but that was our second alkane in the list. Some of you might be wondering why there isn't a methane, because there was a methane. But as we know, alkenes have a carbon to carbon double bond, so you need two carbons for an alkene to exist. So our first alkene is going to be ethene with two carbons. Propene has three carbons, one butene has four carbons, and the one just means that the carbon to carbon double bond is after the first carbon. So in our condensed structural formula, you can see it's in between the first and second carbon. One pentene has five carbons, one hexene has six carbons, one heptene has seven carbons, and one octene has eight carbons. An important formula you need to remember for this is CnH2n. So this means for every carbon you have two hydrogens. Again, on the right hand side of the table, you can see the stick drawing. You can see the condensed structural formula, which they've included instead of the stick drawing. So in this video, we have covered the simple basics behind alkanes and alkenes. With alkanes, we said there was a single bond and the formula was CnH2n plus 2. With alkenes, we said it was a double bond and the formula was CnH2n. And lastly, we looked at the types of bonding. So we said that alkanes have a saturated bond, whereas alkenes have an unsaturated bond. So the exam keyword questions you should be able to answer now are recognising the simple hydrocarbons, alkanes and alkenes, naming both of them, drawing both of them and explaining the bonding and describing how they're different and comparing and contrasting the different bonding between alkanes and alkenes. That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start talking about more sophisticated hydrocarbons. So it's really important you understand everything in this video before continuing on, so it all makes sense for you.